Paul say, you are the one to help me, you are the one to comfort me, especially through your what? Prayer and generosity. Through your prayer and generosity. These two things are very, very important. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. Yes. Okay. Can you see through your prayer and generosity? Prayer is we cannot see. But you don't notice. When you pray for some of your friends and family, if you don't tell them I was praying for you, they never know you pray for them or not. Or God knows. Do you understand? And I pray for all you guys. Mostly daily I pray for all the Bible college students. I pray for you guys daily. But uh, not many people notice uh, what I did. Yeah. I pray, you know, okay? <laughs> Very good. Praise God. <coughs> you understand? Thank you also. I, I, I respect you. You guys pray for me also. I know that. But look, generosity is uh, you can see. Financially, materially, if you're supporting for somebody, because physical thing you can see with your own your eyes. It's very important. Where your money go, your heart will go. Do you understand? Therefore, when you pray for somebody, definitely the finance will go. Look at the Matthew chapter 6. You know, if you say then I pray for you and then you know, finally, the finance will go. If you look at the Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. Matthew 6, verse 21 is a very, very important scripture. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Yeah? Yeah? If you send uh, some mission offering to Africa, your heart will be in Africa. Yeah? And then, <coughs> do you remember last Sunday, Pastor Joe, he shared a testimony, or oh, he needed some 200 pounds for mission fees in, in America. And then somebody gave him the offering, 200 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and a few days ago, somebody text message, Pastor Paul, check your account, I send the 200 pounds. <laughs> Can you imagine, somebody send me 200 pounds. <laughs> it's not wonderful. I never asked them to help me, no, no. Just uh, somebody knew and uh, where the treasure is, yeah? And there your heart will be also. And then uh, look at the uh, uh, scripture, Romans chapter 16, verse 2. Romans chapter 16, verse 2. Paul, he write down about uh, the members, uh, about uh, how they supporting for his ministry. Romans chapter 16 verse 2, I ask you to receive her in the Lord a way worthy of the saint, to give her any help she may need from you. For she has been great help to many people, including me. <laughs> Who is this woman? Phoebe. Phoebe is an amazing woman. She, she helped uh, to many people, and including the Apostle Paul. Yeah, is not a wonderful woman. She helped so many people. So many people. You know, Brother Patrick is in heaven now. He was my personal assistant for 27 years. 27 years. Do you know how he helped me? Sometimes he gave me 100 pounds. Sometimes he gave me 200 pounds. Sometimes he gave me 300 pounds. You know, he gave me all the times. And then sometimes our church needed some, even, you know, we, we, we put the shower room in, 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 in our toilet. <coughs> Do you know what we did? We spent 4,500 pounds. Very expensive. Can you imagine that's your 4,500 pound job? And then he gave me 500 pounds. His contribution for the festival, I think you can use this money for the shower room. And then continuously, 
I don't know how many of you received some some offering from Brother Patrick. Yes, yes. Only one. No, no, no. You two. You three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even you two. <laughs> <laughs> Can you? She's not. A, you know who's a Patrick? Yeah? Yeah, I know. Can you imagine? Wow. She received. The, can you lift up hand? Be honest. I mean, anybody received the help from Patrick? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. <laughs> He's an amazing man of God. And then uh, we, we thanks be to God. You know, this, this woman, Pebe, she has been a uh, great uh, help to many people, including me, what Paul said. Yeah? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 6. Perhaps I will stay with you a while or even spend the winter so that you can help me on my journey uh, wherever I go. Yeah? You know, he said that uh, I do not want to see you now, but make only a passing visit. I hope to spend some time with you if the Lord permit. But I will stay on the, at Apicius until uh, Pentecost because a great door for effective work has opened to me, and there are many who opposed me. Paul, he encouraged uh, his uh, Corinthian Christian, thank you for you helping me. Look at the second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 11. Yes. And you help us by your prayers. Can you see the prayer help, yeah? Yeah, spiritual help. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious uh, favor granted to us, answer to prayer of many. You help us spiritually. How can you support for each other? Spiritually, by prayer. By prayer. Prayer. And Philippians chapter 2 verse, tw verse 30. Philippians chapter 2 verse 30 say, yeah, because he almost died for the work of Christ, risking his life to make up for the help you to could not give, um, give me. Who is this man? Yeah, Epaphroditus. If you look at verse 25, he almost died. Yeah, and he is willing to help everybody. Yeah, he's an amazing man. Even he has got a is a high risk to supporting for the. Uh, work of God. Second Timothy chapter one verse eighteen say, "May the Lord grant that he he will find mercy from the Lord on that day." He, you know very well in how many ways he helped me in Ephesus. Do you understand? God can help you through somebody prayer. God can help you by somebody's. Uh, you know, financial help. Financial help is very, very effective. <coughs> Last month, somebody sent a text message from America, Pastor of all, that person, you never know her, but that person, he heard about, she heard about uh, your prayer request to get the, um, to get the uh, mosque to come to the church. She sent us a little of what she said. You know, thank you so much. And then, and then she contact with me by Kakao, Korean, then uh, like WhatsApp. And then she sent me, she say, first of all, I give a little offering for your church building, if you don't mind, you know, give me your bank account, whatever. And then she's willing to send, uh, send a, a check. She sent me the 2,000 pound, Check. <laughs> Can you imagine the American check I received for the uh, property, uh, the mosque building? It's very encouraging. I, I I don't know her, but she heard about that. I working for Jesus. She sent me some offering for the mosque to come up to the church building. You know, this is very encouraging. Somebody who never know you and then do something for you. How, how much you encourage. Yeah. 
you know, I get uh, so many encouragement. One day I didn't have money. I was preaching in central London. For a long time I lived in the North London at the time. From central London to work, four hours journey by work. I was so tired because every time I preaching, I carried my megaphone. Normally, in these days, uh, you guys are working together with me. At the time, I preaching by myself with a megaphone. I carried a megaphone. I was working, or oh, I working two hours and another two hours journey from from uh, Holborn. Holborn is a central London. Yeah, Holborn is a yeah, Holborn. Holborn is a little bit north, north, little bit north London. Holborn station near the King's Cross. I need to go another. Okay. And then God spoke to me. Why not preaching in front of Holborn station? Okay, I preach. I'm tired, but the big God came designed to preaching. I was preaching. Around the finishing, uh, around 10 minutes, I was preaching, preaching. Somebody, English guy, listened to the, my message. And uh, he's, he came to me. He said, I'm born again. He said to me, yeah, praise God. And he said to me, Holy Spirit spoke to me to give you 10 pounds. Mm. And <laughs> he gave me 10 pounds. I said, I'm OK. He said, no, no, you need to take it. And then I said to him, be honest with you, I didn't have money to buy the ticket. I can use this ten pound to buy the ticket to go back to my home <laughs> because I was very tired. You see, God answered me through somebody. Sometimes, two times, also God answered you through wind, not by somebody. I was driving. I drive around the twenty, but well, maximum thirty miles or twenty-five miles so under the thirty miles driving. My wife asking me. We need to uh, buy some basic stuff, like the milk or some basic stuff you need to buy. She asked me. She knew that I don't have money. I said to her, if you ask me, is uh, nothing happened, don't ask me, ask your father in heaven. <laughs> 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 and uh, she knew, and then, you know what, uh, while I was driving, she prayed to God. I need to open my eyes because I drive. <laughs> she prayed. She prayed around the two minutes. When she pray, she say, Amen. I say, Amen. When she open her eyes, she say, Amen. And open, guess what happened? While our car moving, she say, Over there, over there. <laughs> what? <laughs> she saw the money. Can you imagine when the car moving 25 miles to see the money, open her eyes? After two minutes, open her eyes and saw the money. I didn't see. I give the indication and then break it and stop it. And I saw the ten pound. <laughs> I said, "Can you mean God? God? God used the wind to bring the money in there? And then when she say Amen, after two minutes later, and then this is a got your direction. Do you understand? She opened her eyes and then she saw the money, and I collect the money and ten pound. Father, I thank you. <laughs> On the street, I saw those so many." So many uh, this kind of miracles how God provide. God is gracious. He knows what you need. How many believe that God knows what you need? Do you know that? Amen. He knows what you need. Before you ask, He knows. But you ask Move and seek and knock the door. Yeah, he knows. That is why um, they helped Him through their prayer and generosity. Can you underline prayer and generosity? Prayer is a spiritual thing you cannot see. But generously you can see with your own your eyes. Yeah? That is why in Paul he was encouraged by this congregation, Philippian congregation, Corinthian congregation. They were a source of pride and grief. I look at the uh, second Corinthians chapter seven, verse four. Second Corinthians uh, chapter seven, verse four. I have greater confidence in you. I take a greater pride in you. I am greatly encouraged in all our troubles. My joy knows no bound. I'm so thankful you encourage me. I'm so grateful. You know, Paul, he knows how God is working in Corinthians' life. He was very proud. And then look at the chapter 8, verse 14, say, same book was for the at the no, no, no. present. The second point is chapter seven verse eight. Eight and fourteen is it? Oh yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah, chapter seven verse eight, sorry, thank you. Yeah, thank you. 
Second Corinthians chapter 7 verse 8, Even I cause you sorrow by my letter, I do not neglect it. And uh, then too, I didn't neglect it. I see that my letter hurt you, but only for a little while. Do you know what Paul said? Good for you. I hurt you by my letter. What is his former letter? If you look at the Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 4. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 4. For I write to you out of great distress, anguish of heart, and with many tears, not to grieve you, but to let you know the depth of love for you. My heart is anguish, painful. And then he said to them, you know, I send you this letter. This is my letter hurt you, but only for a little while. Yeah. It's good to good to good to know the truth. Yeah. When somebody telling the truth for you, it will be hurt, isn't it? But good for you. But look, verse 9, but now I'm happy not because you were made sorry, but because your sorrow led you to repentance. For you become a sorrowful as God intended, and your soul were not harmed in any way by us. Godly sorrow bring um, and repentance that lead to salvation and leaves no neglect. But worldly sorrow bring death. And uh, see what this godly sorrow has uh, produced in you. Mm -hmm. the, the godly sorrow is good for you. The godly sorrow leading to repentance. Yeah. If you have some proper sorrow in the eyes of the Lord, the godly sorrow bring you to repentance. It's good for you. Uh, this morning I live with two brothers. And then, did he, did he hurt my brothers? Yeah. Did you hurt when I rebuke you this morning? I did. You no, did. You <laughs> <coughs> good for you. Good for you. <laughs> uh, but dinner is good for you. If somebody hurt you because of you, he someone telling the truth. Prophet Nathan telling the truth for yeah. King David is hurt, yeah? But they are godly sorrow lead you to repentance and they will repent of the sins. Do you know, therefore, who is your good friend? Good friend, friend is telling Very the truth truth's. in love. Yeah? Can you say to each other, please tell me the truth in love. Say to each other, please, please tell, tell me the truth in love. It's good for you when you tell the truth in love of Jesus. It's so important in the last day. Okay, look at um, chapter 14, verse 1. No, just uh, also verse 14. Oh, is yeah, a, is a, sorry. Verse 14. <laughs> sorry, I, I made a continuing mistake. Well, sorry. That's right. Yeah. Chapter 7, verse 14, yeah? yeah? I had a boasting to him about you, and you have not embraced me, but just that everything you said to you was true. So our boasting about you to Titus uh, has proved to be true as you were. Yeah? When you boast, you boast in Christ Jesus. Look at the 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19 saying, Yes. Yes. Yes, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19. What is our hope, our joy, or crown in which we will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ when He comes? Is it not you? Yeah. Indeed, uh, you are our glory and joy. Yeah. You know what Paul said to Thessalonian Christians? You are um, our glory and our joy. Yeah. This is... Uh, as God want to speak to you, yeah. If Jesus come to this classroom, He say to you, "You are my glory, you are my joy." When God say to you, Amen. "How wonderful, Amen." I I believe that God will speak to you like this. You are my glory, you are my joy. Yeah. Look at then the subject of this own prayer, Second Corinthians chapter thirteen. 
verse uh, seven. Second Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse seven say, "Now we pray to God that you will not do anything wrong. Not the people will see that we have stood the test, but that you will do what is right, even though we may see to have failed." Yeah. Yeah, he pray. Look at Ephesians chapter one, verse sixteen. Say, Ephesians one, verse sixteen. I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Yeah, I pray to God for you. Yeah. Um, uh, when I pray to God for you and your children, sometimes two times I ask you, your children, yeah, how is Joshua, Sister Tina? Is doing well. Oh really? Praise God. Yeah, if you if you love Jesus, yeah, tell him if you love Jesus, ask him to come to church on Sunday to see me. Yeah. No, tell tell him what I'm saying to you now. You need to send my message. Yeah. If you love Jesus, come to church and worship together with the Pastor Paul Saul. Yeah, this is my message point. Yeah. Yesterday, in a terrible scene, uh, Brother Jan, mm -hmm. he come, he say, Pastor Paul, can I have a Bible? <laughs> he came and I gave the Bible yesterday. Then I say to him, read the Bible now, before you listen to water baptism. Yeah, he, he going to do it. And then uh, I, I'm so uh, glad he is willing to start a new life. Yeah, his new life is very important, new life. You know, if you if you look at the Bible, yeah, if you look at the Bible, I can summarize it two words. Number one, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Number two, transformation. <laughs> you know, from Genesis to Book of Revelation, talk about the Jesus. And uh, another thing is transformation. You can see that so many people start a new life through the Bible, but Bible mentioned about the people's life, how they start a new life. Jacob become what? Israel. Abraham become what? Abraham. Sarah become what? Sarah. Saul become what? Paul. Seba become what? Keba. Seba. Seba become uh, Peter. Peter. Seba. Peter. Do you understand? Many, many people start a new life through this book. In the Bible, talking about uh, somebody's life to start a new life, how they start. Also, Bible mentioned some people they don't transform, mm. <laughs> like Saul, King Saul, Paris. he perished, he died. Like uh, between uh, Judah, he killed himself. In the Bible, mentioned about the transformation. Anybody meet Jesus properly, they start a new life. Can you say Amen? amen. Therefore, if you used to ask me, can you summarize your two words in the Bible? Jesus and transformation. Yeah? So, he met Jesus. He became a Paul. Therefore, this book changed the life. Yeah? This is very important. Your training in the Bible college. Yeah? I believe the Sister Monica, two years later, you will be a very good, great preacher. <laughs> you are a great missionary in UK, not only UK, all over the world. You preach the gospel, and then um, you know you, you you know where is the scripture about uh, you know, Abraham's life, about the Jacob's life, about the David's life. You can see, we study in this book, yeah, the Bible. You can see the transformation. That is why Paul say, uh, "I give thanks to God." Uh, Ephesians chapter one verse sixteen. I can read for you. I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayer. I thank you to God. I keep on praying for you. Yeah, you start a new life. Philippians chapter one verse four say, Yeah, in all my prayers say, first day until now. Yeah. <coughs> Do you know the Korean Korean deacon who are leading the prayer worship in Korean service on yes. Sunday? Yes. Uh, he's a deacon Yun Su Yun Su Lee. And I knew it uh, 32 years. <laughs> he was my youth member. 32 years ago, he was a 
what are the 14 teenager boy now he's a, a, over 40 years 45 something 40 something do you, do you understand this young boy he will know each other for 32 years and then still fellowship together with me he still now he was a young boy a long time so now he's a, he's a one of a leader in our church we know each other for 32 years and then this is a relationship I know Tina over 27 years, 28 years, because I opened the church in Brixton, 1996. 28 years ago, I opened the church by the grace of God. And then I met uh, Katrina and then yeah. Tina. Pray for our ministry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, JD's. It is on the, on the, the, the basement, yeah. The, the solicitors. Of of yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, Katrina come from Egypt. And she's a wonderful, faithful, faithful, you know, worker for Muslims. Uh, I thank you God for her life. And then, you know, this kind of relationship, not just one year, ten years, twenty, thirty years, for a long time, we know each other and pray for one another. And they, uh, this kind of encouragement that Paul, he had. Look at your note. In addition to this, uh, Paul took active step to foster relationship. And his letter was themselves a uh, means of uh, being present with those who, uh, those from the whom he was physically absent. The goal of his missionary journeys was not simply to preaching, but to establish the relationship. Can you underline? And his journey, yeah, his missionary journey was not simply to preaching the gospel, but to establish the relationship. Is very very important. Established the relationship. Do you know when I go to Africa? Do you know how many pe how many pastors be with me in the minibus? Fourteen people. We, by the grace of God, we bought the minibus in Kenya, and fourteen people stay in our minibus for two weeks. Two weeks, two weeks training with me. Do you know fourteen pastors stay? All the fourteen our branch pastors in Kenya, Uganda even the Sudan, these pastors are getting together with me for two weeks of special training. We sleep together, we eating together, it's amazing. We preach the gospel together, special two weeks of training. And then that is why these uh, branch pastors, they are very active. Oh, I still remember one day, I think last year or two years ago, two or three German, uh, Korean ladies, but they live in Germany over 30, 40 years. They have a German mentality. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? They stay with me for two weeks. Two, three people. I don't remember how many. Uh, two, three. At, at, at two, two. At least two. Some from London also. The two Korean ladies from Germany, they have a the very big house. They have a the swimming pool. They enjoy their life in Germany. Mm -hmm. But they stay in in they stay in in Africa for two weeks. Then what happened? After ten days, uh, they thought they got heaven from Africa <laughs> because they thought they they gonna die physically, really. And then because uh, I say to them from the beginning, don't complain in any circumstance. <laughs> Did, <laughs> their mouth is <laughs> They kept quiet for 10 days. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me, you know, for 10 days, where they sleep? They sleep on the floor. When they sleep on the floor, cockroach is moving all the, from the pillow. And the, when they wake up, they're scary. For me, you know how I sleep? I sleep in the veranda. Veranda is uh, full of mosquitoes. Balcony. And then, balcony. And then, you know, I saw the tire, you know, all the tire they put the uh, veranda, I sleep beside the tire, tire beside <laughs> and water in there. Full of mosquito bites on my, on my, on my arms. So hot, over 38, almost 40 degree. Do you know Mombasa? Do you know Mombasa? Is a uh, in city. In the in Kenya, Nairobi, Mombasa is more hot, very hot. And then people from Germany, these beautiful two ladies, they're over 70 years old. Mm -hmm. They say to each other, 
before the finish the journey, they thought they died for Jesus <laughs> through, <laughs> through sickness. <laughs> <laughs> and the Holy Spirit spoke to me very clearly, you need to book in the ticket, uh, you need to book in the hotel for them. And then I searching, I found a very nice hotel. And I say to them, you can stay there. I stay with the, these uh, African pastors. They say, they're begging me, Pastor Paul, we need you. Because uh, they are scaring to only to stay in the hotel. They need uh, some uh, uh, body, uh, bodyguard. <coughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like bodyguard with an African pastor. Well, we get a very nice room. Problem was, there's no water. Yeah. There's a water tap in there, shower room in there, the water not come out. And then, <laughs> but this is the best hotel in the, in the town. Do you know what the difficulty in there? There's the best hotel, but no proper water. And the people who are working in the hotel, they bring the water by a basket. And then <laughs> they take a shower. But no one, no one like this kind of, uh, no one like this kind of uh, mission. When I ask them, I think, do you want to go to Africa again? <laughs> they didn't send me any text message. <laughs> they didn't want to go. So hard, so hard. But I go there again. In this time, in this time, I knew all my, I myself go. I asked the pastor, Joe, shall you go? But he said, I pray about that. But be honest with you, whenever I go for mission to Africa, I lose the, at least um, three or five kilos of my weight gone. Why? Because it's not easy. Suffering, difficulties, hardship. But I still go there, not only for preaching. What is um, one of the messages? Relationship. Relationship, thank you very much. Relationship with the... Uh, then I knew them since 1994. For 30 years, you know, this <coughs> young pastor now, I, they are teenager boys, the 25, 26 years ago. I gave the water baptism in the Lake Victoria. And now they have become pastor of the big church. They respect me, they, they, they respect me as a, as, a, uh, as a father. I'm their father to them. And then I go there, not only p preaching, but relationship. We stop the relationship. Look at, you know, relationship in which he has one genuine participation. Can you underline? He was a genuine participation, participate. Paul stayed working at this uh, thread while teaching them the base of faith, acting as their leader. Can you underline? And teaching them the base of faith and acting as their leader, and guiding them on how do they should uh, conduct their lives. And they did not just live uh, and work and preach the doji he led, but he also had a heartfelt love and affection for them. Can you underline heartfelt love and affection for them? Do you know this is a very, very important. Before you go working together, before you live together, you have to have this in the heart. And I told my brother Stuart uh, this morning, I have a heart. You know, not when he is a struggle. It's painful. It's not well. Yeah, it's my my heart, my heart for him with a compassion heart. Do you understand? When some of our brothers are hurting him, struggle. How do I feel? I feel pain. I feel uncomfortable. Of course, I pray for them. This is very very important. Heartfelt love. Look at the one Corinthians chapter four verse seventeen say. <coughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. For yeah, for this reason I am sending you to Timothy, my son, whom I love, who is faithful in the law. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agree with what I teach everywhere in every church. Yeah? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. And look at the Second Corinthians chapter two, verse four. Second Corinthians chapter two, verse four. Four. I write down. 
our little lady about um, great distress and anguish heart and with many tears. Why? Let you know that the deep depth of my love for you. He has got a very love for you know, these people in Corinthian church. And then Philippians chapter 4 verse 1. Philippians chapter 4 verse 1 say, Therefore my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friend. Yeah, I long him for. I love and long him for. I long him for you. I love you. This is a very important uh, uh, attitude of the leader in, in the church. Yeah. And then First Thessalonians chapter two verse eight. We love you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God but our lives as well because you had become so dear to us. He's willing to give his life for them. And do you understand? That kind of attitude. Wonderful. Love and affection he desired would be returned by them. Look at the second Corinthians chapter seven verse two. Second Corinthians chapter seven verse two. Yeah? yeah. Make room for us in uh, in your heart. We have longed <coughs> no we have corrupted no one. We have exported no one. Yeah? Verse 7. Yeah. <clears throat> Not only by his coming, but also by the comfort you had given him. He told us about your longing for me, your deep sorrow, your uh, ardent concern for me, so that my joy was greater than ever. Yeah. My great joy than ever. According to his lead leadership, was uh, direct at the particular people. Yeah? Can you understand? His leadership was uh, directed at the particular people. Do you know that Jesus he has got a um, relationship with the twelve of them, but particular, how many people? Most close? Three. Who are they three? John, James, and Peter. Yeah. John and James and Peter. Yeah? Peter, John, and James. This is a three. Three is very, very important. John, he's, he's a James. Who is a James? Younger brother. Younger brother. Yeah. He's a family. Yeah. Peter. Who is a brother of Peter? And Andrew. Andrew. Not Andrew at the time. Only three. Yeah. Peter, John, and James. Three of them. And then, yeah, he, he's, he's like this. And uh, his letter uh, depicts uh, countless uh, personal uh, connection. Can you underline, underline countless uh, personal connection? It's personal. Do you understand? His letter is a personal letter, like Romans chapter 16, or Rome mentioned 35 people. Can you anybody? 30, mention 35 people by name. Yeah? He knows. God knows your name. Yeah? <coughs> How Jesus knows the uh, Zacchaeus on the skimmer tree. <laughs> mm -hmm. Of course, Jesus is the God. But do you know what Jesus say? Zacchaeus, come down. I want to stay in your house tonight. He knows your name. Do you know that he knows your name? He knows your number of hairs. Sometimes, two times, you cry before God, and God speak to you. I know you. I know your pain. I know your hardship. I know your struggle. <coughs> I can help you. How many of you heard about that? God said, I know you. I know your pain. Hey, have you heard about yeah. that? Yeah? Amen. That is my encouragement. You know, this man, <coughs> he has got a personal connection. Like uh, Romans 16, 35 people mentioned the name. And several others through their association with uh, those named. More broadly, his letter were not from letters, but uh, targeted letter. Can you underline form let not form letters but targeted letter. A different, yeah? Not just official letter, no. But this is a kind of a you know, nearly uh, targeting letter. It's an influential letter. 
written to specific people in specific churches in specific location. Can you underline specific people, specific church in specific location? Yeah, special people specifically, and specific church in special location and differing in culture setting. And this is a true even for the letter to Ephesians. Indeed, Paul's ability to understand the different culture. Can you understand, understand different cultures? You have to understand the cultures in your ministry. Do you know I live in London? <clears throat> I do my best when I eat the noodle. Do you know Korean style the eating the noodle? Do you know how they eat? Oh, you know, <laughs> make a sound. Like this, but in UK, if you eat the noodle, if you make a sound, what what what, what people say? Very good. Very good. Did you understand? <laughs> in 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 Korea, if you blow up the nose in Korea, it's very good. You are not more human being in Korea. <laughs> you are like animal in Korean culture. Do you understand? In in Korean culture, if you biting something, you make a sound like this. It's mm. nothing wrong. But in UK, if you make some sound, it's a very good also, yeah. Very silent. Very silent. And they don't talk also. <laughs> and then it's too much. But is you understand the culture. It's a, it's very important to understand the culture. Yeah. I know you come from India, yeah? Do you understand English culture now? You know everything now, okay? <laughs> it's good. <laughs> if you don't know, it's a, sometimes it's a like, very offensive way uh, to, uh, to, to people in UK. But it's understand the culture is very, very important. Uh, cross culture, you have to understand. Therefore, to be a missionary, yeah, you need to understand the culture of their people, what kind of food they like. You know, for me, <coughs> I don't eat the uh, dog anymore. Long time <laughs> ago, oh, my favorite food is dog. You know, people they offense me, and uh, people try to attack me. We have to, I say like this. But naturally, in Korea, you know, people they eat. But uh, I was non-Christian. I was a policeman. I was a worldly man. Even I was a strong Buddhist, the Buddhist should not eat the meat, <laughs> only eat the vegetable, like vegetarian. But for me, I eat all kinds of food. I eat any food except the human being. Do you know, I was, <laughs> I was, <laughs> but now I don't need uh, some special food. But why? Because I respect the culture. Do you, do you understand? And uh, when I was in, in Uganda, the Ugandan Christian, they gave me, first of all, this is a very nice food. I said, what's that? Guess whatever. Snake. No snake. Grasshopper. Grasshopper. Ah. You like it? <coughs> grasshopper. Full of grasshopper. When I was a child, I ate the grasshopper. Forty years old. Because. But I didn't eat the grasshopper for a long, long time. And I ate a little bit, one and two. Very delicious. <laughs> Very nice. How many of you had the grasshopper before? Oh, you had the, yeah, you had the grasshopper. <coughs> How many ate the crocodile? Crocodile. I went to a restaurant, Seven Star Hotel in Kenya. They offer all kinds of food, wild animal food, giraffe and uh, monkey. All kinds of food. All kinds of food. And then, <coughs> and then the crocodile is a, is a, you know, crocodile food is, I, I thought, is a very strong and then hard. But I was shocked. Do you know what happened? <laughs> crocodile food is like a fish. Very soft. Because of the crocodile live uh, inside water, is a skin is a very hard, but the inside the flesh is a very delicious. Crocodile is a very nice. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, please uh, uh, don't judge me because of what I eat. You ate the crocodile. <laughs> you are a woman. You okay? <laughs> From Hong Kong, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can eat. Uh, yeah, really. Okay. 
But anyway, just、uh, we have some special culture. But understand the culture is very, very important. And then look at the understand the different cultures and context that gave him the adaptability he need. Yeah, can you understand time on the adaptability he need to target his life? Yeah, do you know you have to adapt the culture? Yeah, adapt the culture. Have you heard about that in Brixton? Do you know Brixton? Little called a little Jamaica. They sell the monkey meat.、Yep. Did you know that?、Mm -hmm. In Brixton, I think in UK selling the monkey meat, monkey、uh, meat is、uh, illegal. But illegally they they because they used to eat the monkey in Africa, and then when they come to UK, you know they miss the the old food, and、uh, in the market they selling the monkey meat. You know, <coughs> understand, but we have to adapt the culture and the teaching to need of、uh, those he led. One Corinthians chapter nine verse twenty. Yeah. <laughs> One Corinthians、uh, chapter chapter nine verse twenty. You know, Paul. He is a he is a very good missionary. Why he adopted every situation. One Corinthians chapter nine verse twenty same. <coughs> Let's say verse nineteen. True, I am free and belonging to no man. I make myself a slave to everyone to win、um, as many as possible. Why he make himself a slave to everyone? Why? Because he want to win the more souls. Do you understand? He was not no slave anybody. Yeah, but he want to make himself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I become like a Jew to win the Jews. To doge under the Jew, I become like one under the Jew. True, I myself, I am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. And to doge not having the law, I become like one not having the law. True, I am not free from God's law, but under Christ's law. So as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I become weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all men, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of gospel, that I may share it a blessings. And I spend time with some under the temple yesterday. Most of the alcoholic, I'm not alcoholic. But I spent time with them. Smelly, alcohol smelly. I didn't like the smell, but I talked with them. I spent time with them. I pray for them. Oh, do you know this alcohol? They didn't clean. Very dirty. They come. They gonna kiss here. I kiss. <laughs> <laughs> smell it. For them, they say, "Oh, Pastor Paul and the." If I say, "Don't hook with me," and it look like、uh, you know offensive, they say, "Okay." You know, I I keep the wet wet tissue in my in my in my car. Why? Because so、oh, dirty hand and shake my hand and kiss my hand like this, and and then I smell it my hand. That is why when I go back to my car and before I drive, I clean my hand, and then sometimes two times I clean my hand because I sometimes I forget to clean my hand. My hand is my my car handle is dirty. Why? Because I pray for so many people, and then oh, God knows why I spend time with、uh, my dear brothers and these sisters. I hug with them, and because I want to winning the soul for Jesus. Did you understand? I'm very sensitive. If I smell the very the strange smell, it's easy to vomiting. Oh, <coughs> I shared one testimony. Finish and have lunch. One day, one day, you know, I I stay in the upstairs of a Jamaican church, and、uh, they have around the hundred twenty members. One evening, I went there around ten o'clock in the evening. Oh, they around sixty people and another big big argument, and I listened why they argue. 
because of me. Why this uh, church uh, Jamaica members they fighting two groups because of me? Do you know what they say? I can hear. They say that Pastor Paul song brought to the homeless day and night. Homeless, do you know the 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 Jamaican church? They have the special offering box, offering box made by metal this side, mm -hmm. and then the offering offering box is uh, inside the church wall. <laughs> but somebody removed this uh, metal big one, remove it because of offering inside. And they say, because of Paul's song, bring the homeless, one of the homeless took it. Therefore, they say, they want to kick out uh, this man, Paul's song. <laughs> <laughs> because of Paul's song, bring the homeless every day. Because I brought the homeless all the time. <clears throat> and then another group say, oh, Pastor Paul's song, he working for Jesus, please uh, uh, keep him. Because he, he, pre he preached the gospel for homeless. But actually, nobody knows who took the, this, uh, this uh, opening box. But when I heard, oh, on that day, behind uh, me, one homeless came with me on that day, on the evening, around 10 o'clock. And then some people saw me, oh, Pastor Paul, come here now. <laughs> no, he needs to go away. <laughs> oh, I, Holy Spirit spoke to me, you, you must be a peacemaker. Do you know what I say today? Please calm down. I ask you that. I want to say something for all you guys. They listen. I say to them, from tonight, I don't stay in here. I want to move out from tonight. And then they saw the one homeless behind me. Because they thought I don't want to bring another homeless on, on that night. And I say, from tonight, I don't stay. They are very exciting. But some of the group who are supporting for me, oh, Pastor Paul, we are so sorry. But because of, I say, I don't stay in here anymore, I'm making peace, that neck side. Then I'm, I was like peacemaker. Anyway, I told uh, this uh, homeless, uh, stay here. I want to bring some blanket. Because I told them I don't sleep from tonight. I went upstairs and then two bed flat. I brought the blanket. Guess what, Jeff? I don't know where to sleep. And then I know the near uh, near uh, my home. This is some park. I went there. It's a long uh, bench. And then I say to him, "Put your head on the other side." I put my head this side, and he slept. I was so sorry because of, you know I have my own two bedroom flat on the upstairs of the church. But uh, I could not sleep because I say to them, uh, from now on I don't sleep in there anymore. They are okay. But do you know what Jeffron? Around the two thirty or before three o'clock I wake up. Why? Smell. Because smell. That guy that homeless didn't you know, want we remove the shoes. And that guy he put his uh, his uh, feet on my chest and then you know his uh, socks is whole and the two toes under the or in front of my my, my 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 nose. When I saw this I become like crazy. So angry because of smell it. I never wake up because of a so strange smell. This is the first time in my life. Because I'm easily to vomiting him by smell. I was saying, do you know what I did? I hold his feet. I push. And then and he fell on the floor. <laughs> he said, oh, Pastor Paul, what? Don't you know that you put your feet on my chest? And then I saw your tail, your toes. <laughs> smell it. He said, oh, I'm so sorry, so I'm sorry. You know, I was on, on that evening, I was not happy because of uh, then I couldn't sleep. Anyway, I say to him, don't do it. He said, no, no problem, I, I'll sleep. Guess what, Jeff, I slept. I wake up again around 3.40 or around 4 o'clock in the morning, I sleep. I wake up again. Guess what, Jeff, that guy, he put the, the, his feet again on my chest. And then I smell it. I'm more angry. I was not very you know, sanctified. I was, I said, some hot temper. <clears throat> I almost. Uh, Do <laughs> <laughs> you know what I did? I tried to hold his hand more wide, more strong than I want to uh, kick him. And then when I hold it, and then I tried to do it, I heard the voice of God. Do you know what God spoke to me? What is the love of God?
When I, when I heard the, what is the love of God, do you know what I say to God? Yeah, I'm a little bit crying. If you are in my position, how do you feel? Yeah, if you are in my position, how do you feel? I, I express my feeling to God. And then I get uh, some idea. Okay, I say to God, God, you are God of uh, miracles and you can do anything uh, as you do, as you please. Do you know what I did? I touch, <coughs> it's my boom. I touch my nose. Can you do something for me? No more smell. When I touch my nose, no more smell. Do you know? Do you know, do you get uh, some anesthetic injection in the dental surgery, yeah? in the, like numb? It's numb on this area. Suddenly, no smelly. Guess what, Jeppa? My tears are rolling on my face. I never seen in my life. And God is merciful, God. I say to God, can you help me? I cannot sleep with a terrible smell. I touch my nose. Suddenly, smell gone. This is a thing I express my feeling and then nobody understands what I'm saying because I experience God spoke that is love of God and then Father I thank you I slept why, why I, my tears are rolling on my face because so hard difficult but certainly God removed the smell from now my, my nose I slept very well I learned from Jesus directly. What is the love of God? Do you understand? Anyway, this is my testimony. I offer my heart to share with you. To be a leader in Christ Jesus, and God wants to see your true character, how you follow Jesus. Shall you touch your heart and pray? You can have heart of Jesus and love of Jesus. Father, I offer my heart to share with my brothers and sisters. I was so hard when I get uh, this terrible smell on my uh, chest and then uh, in front of my nose. But you are the one to remove the smell suddenly, instantly. And I fell with the love of Jesus. Father, would you give us your love? Would you give us your heart? We have the heart of Jesus and mind of Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Give the cloud offering for Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you.